Another day, another story. Moa, order Dinornithiformes, are an extinct group of flightless birds formerly endemic to New Zealand. During the late Pleistocene Holocene, there were nine species, in six genera. Welcome to Tarbo Eminent Channel. The two largest species, Dinornus robustus and Dinornus novi zelandii, reached about 3.6 meters, 12 feet, in height with neck outstretched, and weighed about 230 kilograms, 510 pounds, while the smallest, the bush mower, Anomalopteryx didiformis, was around the size of a turkey. Estimates of the moa population when Polynesians settled New Zealand circa 1300 vary between 58,000 and approximately 2.5 million. Moa are traditionally placed in the ratite group. However, genetic studies have found that their closest relatives are the flighted South American Tynamus, once considered a sister group to ratites. The nine species of moa were the only wingless birds, lacking even the vestigial wings that all other ratites have. They were the largest terrestrial animals and dominant herbivores in New Zealand's forest, shrubland, and subalpine ecosystems until the arrival of the Maori, and were hunted only by the host's eagle. Moa extinction occurred within 100 years of human settlement of New Zealand, primarily due to overhunting. Etymology The word moa is a Polynesian term for domestic fowl. The name was not in common use among the Maori by the time of European contact, likely because the bird it described had been extinct for some time, and traditional stories about it were rare. The earliest record of the name was by missionaries William Williams and William Colenso in January 1838. Colenso speculated that the birds may have resembled gigantic fowl. In 1912, Maori chief Europeni Pahara claimed that the moa's traditional name was Te Kura, the red bird. Description. Moa skeletons were traditionally reconstructed in an upright position to create impressive height, but analysis of their vertebral articulations indicates that they probably carried their heads forward, in the manner of a kiwi. The spine was attached to the rear of the head rather than the base, indicating the horizontal alignment. This would have let them graze on low vegetation, while being able to lift their heads and browse trees when necessary. This has resulted in a reconsideration of the height of larger moa. However, Maori rock art depicts moa or moa-like birds, likely geese or adzebils, with necks upright, indicating that moa were more than capable of assuming both neck postures. No records survive of what sounds moa made, though some idea of their calls can be gained from fossil evidence. The trachea of moa were supported by many small rings of bone known as tracheal rings. Excavation of these rings from articulated skeletons has shown that at least two moa genera, Eurapteryx and Imaeus, exhibited tracheal elongation, that is, their trachea were up to one meter, three feet, long and formed a large loop within the body cavity. They are the only ratites known to exhibit this feature, which is also present in several other bird groups, including swans, cranes, and guinea fowl. The feature is associated with deep resonant vocalizations that can travel long distances. Evolutionary Relationships Although dozens of species were described in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, many were based on partial skeletons and turned out to be synonyms. Currently, 11 species are formally recognized, although recent studies using ancient DNA recovered from bones in museum collections suggest that distinct lineages exist within some of these. One factor that has caused much confusion in moa taxonomy is the intraspecific variation of bone sizes, between glacial and interglacial periods, see Bergman's rule and Allen's rule, as well as sexual dimorphism being evident in several species. Dinorna seems to have had the most pronounced sexual dimorphism, with females being up to 150% as tall and 280% as heavy as males, so much bigger that they were classified as separate species until 2003. 1819, a 2009 study showed that Eurapteryx cortus and E. gravis were synonyms. A 2010 study explained size differences among them as sexual dimorphism. A 2012 morphological study interpreted them as subspecies, instead. Phylogeny Because moa are a group of flightless birds with no vestiges of wing bones, questions have been raised about how they arrived in New Zealand, and from where. 
Many theories exist about the MOA's arrival and radiation in New Zealand, but the most recent theory suggests that they arrived in New Zealand about 60 million years ago, Maya, and split from the basal, see below, MOA species, Megalapteryx, about 5.8 Maya instead of the 18.5 Maya split suggested by Baker et al. 2005. This does not necessarily mean there was no speciation between the arrival 60 Maya and the basal split 5.8 Maya, but the fossil record is lacking and most likely the early Moa lineages existed, but became extinct before the basal split 5.8 Maya. The presence of Miocene aged species certainly suggests that Moa diversification began before the split between Megalapteryx and the other taxa. Distribution and Habitat Analyses of fossil moa bone assemblages have provided detailed data on the habitat preferences of individual moa species, and revealed distinctive regional moa faunas. South Island The fauna of the high rainfall west coast beach, Nothophagus, forests that included Anomalopteryx didiformis, bush moa, and Deinornis robustus, South Island giant moa, and the fauna of the dry rain shadow forest and shrublands east of the southern Alps that included Pachyonis elephantopus, heavy-footed moa, Eurapteryx gravis, Imius crassus, and Deinornis robustus. A subalpine fauna might include the widespread D. robustus, and the two other moa species that existed in the South Island. North Island Edit Significantly less is known about North Island paleofaunas, due to a paucity of fossil sites compared to the South Island, but the basic pattern of MOA habitat relationships was the same. The South Island and the North Island shared some MOA species, Eurapteryx gravis, Anomalopteryx didiformis, but most were exclusive to one island, reflecting divergence over several thousand years since lower sea level in the Ice Age had made a land bridge across the Cook Strait. In the North Island, Deinornis Novi Zealandii and Anomalopteryx didiformis dominated in high rainfall forest habitat, a similar pattern to the South Island. The other moa species present in the North Island, Eurapteryx gravis, E. cortis, and Pachyonis geronoids, tended to inhabit drier forest and shrubland habitats. P. geronoids occurred throughout the North Island. The distributions of E. gravis and E. cortis were almost mutually exclusive, the former having only been found in coastal sites around the southern half of the North Island. Diet Skull at the Museum for Naturkunde, Berlin Their diet has been deduced from fossilized contents of their gizzards and coprolites, as well as indirectly through morphological analysis of skull and beak, and stable isotope analysis of their bones. Moa fed on a range of plant species and plant parts, including fibrous twigs and leaves taken from low trees and shrubs. The beak of Pachyonis elephantopus was analogous to a pair of secateurs, and could clip the fibrous leaves of New Zealand flax, Formium tenax, and twigs up to at least 8 mm in diameter. Reproduction The pairs of species of moa described as Eurapteryx cortis, E. exilis, Emius hutnii, E. crassus, and Pachyonis septentrionalis, P. mappini have long been suggested to constitute males and females, respectively. This has been confirmed by analysis for sex-specific genetic markers of DNA extracted from bone material. Examination of growth rings in moa cortical bone has revealed that these birds were K-selected, as are many other large endemic New Zealand birds. They are characterized by having a low fecundity and a long maturation period, taking about 10 years to reach adult size. The large Deinornis species took as long to reach adult size as small moa species, and as a result, had fast skeletal growth during their juvenile years. No evidence has been found to suggest that moa were colonial nesters. Moa nesting is often inferred from accumulations of eggshell fragments in caves and rock shelters, little evidence exists of the nests themselves. Excavations of rock shelters in the eastern North Island during the 1940s found moa nests, which were described as small depressions obviously scratched out in the soft dry pumice. Moa nesting material has also been recovered from rock shelters in the central Otago region of the South Island, where the dry climate has preserved plant material used to build the nesting platform, including twigs clipped by moa bills. 
Seeds and pollen within moa coprolites found among the nesting material provide evidence that the nesting season was late spring to summer. Relationship with humans An early 20th century reconstruction of a moa hunt. Before the arrival of humans, the moa's only predator was the massive host's eagle. New Zealand had been isolated for 80 million years and had few predators before human arrival, meaning that not only were its ecosystems extremely vulnerable to perturbation by outside species, but also the native species were ill-equipped to cope with human predators. Polynesians arrived sometime before 1300, and all moa genera were soon driven to extinction by hunting and, to a lesser extent, by habitat reduction due to forest clearance. By 1445, all moa had become extinct, along with host's eagle, which had relied on them for food. Recent research using carbon-14 dating of midden strongly suggests that the events leading to extinction took less than a hundred years, rather than a period of exploitation lasting several hundred years as previously hypothesized. Surviving remains. Dinonus. Skeleton, 1879. Joel Polak, a trader who lived on the east coast of the North Island from 1834 to 1837, recorded in 1838 that he had been shown several large fossil ossifications found near Mount Hikarangi. He was certain that these were the bones of a species of emu or ostrich, noting that the natives add that in times long past they received the traditions that very large birds had existed, but the scarcity of animal food, as well as the easy method of entrapping them, has caused their extermination. Polak further noted that he had received reports from Maori that a species of Struthio still existed in remote parts of the South Island. Diefenbach also refers to a fossil from the area near Mount Hikarangi, and surmises that it belongs to a bird, now extinct, called Moa, or Muvi, by the natives. Muvi is the first transcribed name for the bird. In 1839, John W. Harris, a Poverty Bay flax trader who was a natural history enthusiast, was given a piece of unusual bone by a Maori who had found it in a river bank. He showed the 15 centimeters, 6 in, fragment of bone to his uncle, John Rule, a Sydney surgeon, who sent it to Richard Owen, who at that time was working at the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. Owen puzzled over the fragment for almost four years. He established it was part of the femur of a big animal, but it was uncharacteristically light and honeycombed. Owen announced to a skeptical scientific community and the world that it was from a giant extinct bird like an ostrich, and named it Dinornus. His deduction was ridiculed in some quarters, but was proved correct with the subsequent discoveries of considerable quantities of moa bones throughout the country, sufficient to reconstruct skeletons of the birds. In July 2004, the Natural History Museum in London placed on display the moa bone fragment Owen had first examined, to celebrate 200 years since his birth, and in memory of Owen as founder of the museum. An excavation in Capua Swamp, 1894. Since the discovery of the first moa bones in the late 1830s, thousands more have been found. They occur in a range of late Quaternary and Holocene sedimentary deposits, but are most common in three main types of site, caves, dunes, and swamps. Bones are commonly found in caves or tomo, the Maori word for doline or sinkhole, often used to refer to pitfalls or vertical cave shafts. The two main ways that the moa bones were deposited in such sites were birds that entered the cave to nest or escape bad weather, and subsequently died in the cave and birds that fell into a vertical shaft and were unable to escape. Moa bones, and the bones of other extinct birds, have been found in caves throughout New Zealand, especially in the limestone-slash-marble areas of Northwest Nelson, Karamea, Waitomo, and Te Arnau. Thanks for watching request you to subscribe the channel.